So right now you're saying to yourself, Eric, you said I should join Twitter, but I'm afraid of Twitter. Well, don't worry. I'm here to help you out to try to make you less afraid of Twitter. Let's talk a little bit about what Twitter is, how you use it, and why it's a really good tool, very different than a Facebook, for example, for the kinds of things you might want in your career. So first, if you don't already have a Twitter account, as soon as you go to twitter.com, you're going to find a screen that looks just like this. And if you don't have one, right here's the sign up for Twitter. You'll just put in your name, your email address, and a password. Then you're going to click sign up for Twitter. I'm not going to do it right now because I've already got an account. And then it's going to ask you for something like your handle. Your handle, or it might just say your username, but your handle is essentially your Twitter username. My handle is Statistrophic. So when I log in, I could log in with my email address or I could use my handle, Statistrophic. I'm not going to tell you my password. That would be very bad security. And then I'm going to sign in. All right, this is what yours is going to look like after you have signed in. Now, this is my Twitter feed. This is showing me of different people that I follow. For example, I follow Reuters US News, and this is a tweet that they just recently made. I follow Lancaster Online. This is a tweet that they recently made. Domo is not one I follow, but there are people pay to promote their Twitter, their tweets. And so I got this one from Domo because somebody paid, and I must fall into the demographic that Domo thinks they're paying for. So you're going to see some tweets that you didn't ask for, that aren't the people that you wanted to follow. But now you are in Twitter, and you're not going to have any tweets because you're not currently following anyone. So in Twitter, you follow the people that you want to see their tweets, and other people can follow you. You can see I have made 218 tweets since I started my account. I'm following 65 different people, and I have 26 current people following me. Okay? So let's talk about how do you find followers. Well, chick or, I'm sorry, Twitter will give you suggestions over here. So, for example, maybe I think, oh, WebMD, that would be interesting. If I want to follow them, I just click on the Follow button. And now I'm following WebMD. Okay? As soon as I do that, Twitter's going to say, ooh, ooh, I hooked him. I'm going to give him some other suggestions and see what he likes. All right? But if I wanted to find people, I could search for a specific person. So let's say you want to find me. You could search for Eric Goldstein. See, and there I am. Or you could search, there's actually a lot of Eric Goldsteins. I don't know if you saw. There's a few of them, but th this is the only one that's me. So now you could also search for, whoops, me by my Twitter handle. You could say, at stata, statastrophic. If I could type, it would be particularly helpful. Stat, uh, okay, I'm having a real problem here. At stata, stra, you can see it'll even find me as I go part way through. Statistrophic, and it gives other ones with similar names to me. So I could click on that, and then I could find me, and I would click the follow button. I'm not going to follow myself. But let's say I want to discover other people to follow. I'm going to go here where it says discover. Up here, there's home, there's notifications. When somebody retweets me, which means they take my tweet and copy it, or when somebody likes my tweet and they favorite it, which means they like it, it'll give me a notification. Let's see what my notification is right now. My notification, oh, I got some new people who are following me. The Data Press and Tweet Angels has started following me on August 5th. Wonderful. I sometimes forget to check my notifications, which is why this one from August 5th is coming across as new. I'm going to click on Discover. This is how I could find new people to follow. So here, this is tweets that are tailored for me. Isn't that very nice? But I can click here on who to follow. And it's going to give me, based on some of my experience, based on who I'm already following, lots of people that I could follow. Or I could click on popular accounts. And then it's going to give it to me by category. Well, I'm really interested in science, technology, health. I could look until I find, I passed the technology category, right here is the science category. So I could follow TED Talks, NASA's in there, National Geographic, these are some science ones, government ones you might want, social good, there should be health down here somewhere. Huh? I don't see health. But I could also search for things on Twitter. I could search for health. And here's women's health who I'm not currently following, but I could. The New York Times Health, I'm currently following. I could click here to unfollow them. WebMD, NPR Health News. I've got the National Institute of Health in here. 
If you are interested in cancer, if you're in an oncology ward, you could type in cancer and you might find the American Cancer Society and others. The great thing about Twitter is you can find specific niche things for the field that you are in. It would be a pain in the old days to have to keep up with all the different medical journals and find the ones that had articles that were actually interesting to you. But with Twitter, it's made easy. Because if you follow the right kinds of people, what's going to happen is when an interesting article comes out, let's say cancer is my field, and I follow the American Cancer Society and the Journal of Oncology and so on, when an interesting article comes out, they're going to tweet about it and they're going to have a link. So then I can just look at that account, let me go back to my home, and click on the link and find articles in journals without having to hunt through all of the various journals. So here I have a lot of news ones. I don't just have health ones. But I can scroll, and if I found something that sounded really interesting, I could click on it and then find out more. It would take me to a news story here. Or sometimes, when they're science ones, it will take me to the website where the article is actually posted. Or maybe it'll take me to a news article about the journal article, and so on. Okay. Could a modified herpes virus be the cure for cancer? Whoa, that sounds really interesting if I was an oncology person, right? So I'm going to click on that, and it's going to open up a new page, I, and I'm going to be able to see the article that it just talked about, giving viruses a license to kill cancer. And I'll scroll, and you can see I've got it. Oh, this is a podcast, apparently. I could even listen to the podcast. This is just going to give me a little blurb about it, because I went to an NPR one. So this is the way that I can use Twitter in order to follow the things that are relevant to my profession. Don't be afraid of Twitter. I strongly recommend that you get a Twitter handle, that you get a Twitter account. It's free. You start following the things that are of interest to you, whether the things that are of interest to you in your career as well as in your personal life. You should follow me as long as you're in this class with me, and you can stop following me later, but I will post things that are of interest as far as there's usually studies that have some interesting statistics to them, generally related to either our community or to health, and that way you can see the relevance of what we're studying here. Don't be afraid of the 21st century. Do it. Join.